Please stand for the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And so in the same way all seven died childless. Finally the woman also died. In the resurrection therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die any more, because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him all of them are alive. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In a little while we'll say the Nicene Creed together, where we say we believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. If we were saying the Apostles' Creed, we talk about the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. But why is it the resurrection of the body? I said to one of my lecturers last year that I actually thought most Christians do not believe in the resurrection of the body. They believe in the resurrection of the soul. And though we say the resurrection of the body, it maybe seems something quite strange to many people's way of thinking. So why bother saying the resurrection of the body? Why do we talk about the resurrection of the body? Well, I think it's because Christianity is an incarnational religion. It's a religion where Jesus came in the flesh in a body as a human being. Jesus is God with us. The Word made flesh, as it says at the beginning of John's Gospel, full of grace and truth. In college, a few couple of weeks ago, we looked at the virgin birth, and it's not something I've really considered in a great deal of thought before. Many people see the whole point of the virgin birth as some sort of litmus test are you a liberal or are you a conservative? If you believe in the virgin birth, you're okay, you're a conservative. If you don't believe in the virgin birth, you're one of those dangerous liberals, or the opposite way around, depending on where you're coming from. I don't think that's why it's important, as some sort of test of orthodoxy. Some people will say, well, if you start to doubt the virgin birth, the next thing you'll be doubting the resurrection but the two don't necessarily go together. <coughs> Other people think the virgin birth is all to do with sex. That Mary could not have had sex because sex is evil and therefore it must be a virgin birth. And I don't think that's what it means either. What it does mean is that Jesus came in the flesh. That Jesus was God's begotten Son. That he wasn't just the child of Mary and Joseph but he was God come in the flesh. We discussed this in class and the teacher was of the opinion that, well, we can't know for sure, of course, but he had the idea that maybe half the chromosomes of Jesus came from Mary and half came from the Holy Spirit. And I thought, 
To me, that doesn't make sense because then Jesus would be half man and half God. And I don't think that's who he is. Jesus is holy man and holy God. And we can look at the Greek Orthodox tradition where Mary is called the Theotokos, the God carrier. She was carrying Jesus, but she wasn't genetically his mother. At least that's, I think, the way we can look at it. Because God came with his only son. God came in the flesh himself, almost as a new creation according to his human nature. Yes, he was God from the beginning, but he was coming into this world as a new person to be the first of a new way of living. Well, why does it matter? Well, in a sense, it doesn't matter whether we believe the virgin birth is a theory, but actually I think it matters quite a lot what we think about the flesh and the body. I am not an expert on Buddhism by any means. Most of you probably know more than, than I do, and some of you a great deal more than I do. And yet I get the impression that in Buddhism, the body and the flesh and the physical is seen as a veil of tears and an illusion, and that it's the spiritual world that's important. That's not the message of Christianity. We don't have the idea that the spirit is good and the body, the physical, is bad. We don't have that division. That's what the Gnostics believed right at the time of Jesus or shortly afterwards. We have the idea that all that God has made is good. So whether it's spiritual or spirit or whether it's physical, God made a good world. Of course, it's not that simplistic when we talk about the resurrection of the body because many people are cremated and that doesn't mean they won't be able to rise because their body's already been burnt up. Last year, the body of Cardinal Newman in England was opened up, at least the coffin was opened up because the Roman Catholic Church wanted to declare him a saint and so move his body uh, to a special place. Actually, against his wishes, he said he wanted to stay where he was. When they opened the coffin, it was empty. There was nothing left at all, not even bones. So he couldn't be moved. That doesn't mean he won't gain the resurrection. That's something different. When we hear about the resurrection, it's all about a new body. It's not easy to understand. It's not logical in our way of logical thinking. And yet it is there in God's word. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this imperishable body must put on immortality. God promises something amazing to us in the future. God promises that even though our bodies are here now, our bodies will somehow be better. But it doesn't mean that things are bad now. It doesn't mean that our bodies are evil. And so when we need food, when we enjoy food, when we enjoy a good night's sleep, when we enjoy the warmth of the world, when we enjoy even sex and relationships with somebody else, that's not sinful in itself. In fact, it's something good that God has given because God has given us our bodies. We are an entire people, not a holy spirit somehow trapped in a sinful body. When God created Adam and Eve, he said about Adam, it's not good for Adam to be alone. And so then he created Eve. We're not created to be separate individuals in our own loneliness. And I think one of the worst things we see in our society, especially in the West today, is the number of people living alone. I remember my mom worked as a volunteer with, with the social services to go and visit people who had nobody to visit them. And she visited one old lady who probably would see no one else from one week to another. And then when she died, my mom went to the funeral with the social worker and the priest and the undertaker. That's all the people that were there. And my mum said, you know, she has nobody. And at that time, I was a kid at home with my mother and father, my brother and my grandparents, and I couldn't imagine 
somebody having nobody. How could that possibly be? Well, now I'm 46 years old and single and I can see, yes, that can happen. Because as you get older, if you don't have your own children, your own family, you can become alone. But that's not the way God created us to be. He created us to be in relationship with one another. So if you have a life partner, rejoice that God has given you someone to be incarnational with, to be in body with, because we're not separate souls hoping to get released from this world. We are whole people united together. It doesn't mean that we should exploit one another, of course not, but it means we should love and value the physical. And so we will come a little bit later in our service to the sharing of bread and wine those physical tokens of Jesus' body and blood. And we share in a common cup and we share in one loaf because we're sharing physically as one people, not individuals who just come along to meet and then go home and somehow trapped on our own, but physically together. We don't really understand what Jesus was talking about when he talked about the resurrection and marriage and that he said in heaven we will be like the angels and some people have again taken it to mean oh in heaven there's no sex because angels can't have sex and sex is evil and there'll be no more of that thank you very much and again I don't think that's what it's talking about in fact it seems from scripture that the angels came down at the time of before the time of Noah and seemed to have relationships in it in some way we don't understand anyway so when we talk about a new heaven and a new earth and a new body, I don't think it's a place where there's going to be no physical connection with other people. Else why would we have a new body? Because God honors the physical as well as the spiritual. How awful it would be in heaven if we were there to praise God but could never feel the touch of another human being. God has created us to be together. And so in a few moments we'll say the creed together and sing or speak of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And we can remember those words and think about them particularly as we say that. But before that, usually we have the creed and then sing the next hymn, but we'll listen to this song before the creed and we can sing along if you like and then we'll focus on the creed and what it says. So this song, this hymn is called There is a Day and the music again is in your bulletins if we turn to there and we can listen to the words and as I say if you know it or as you get to know it then you we can sing along but just listen to what the words say about the hope of the resurrection which we have Amen A day of freedom and liberation for the earth. And on that day, the Lord will come to meet his bride. And when we see him, Sounds and the dead will wait. 
It's a 